Hey everyone, Google has recently announced the release of TensorFlow 2.0 and it offers many great features like tighter integration with Keras, eager execution, intuitive higher level APIs and flexible model building on any platform. So in this video series on TensorFlow 2.0, let's explore as how we implement deep learning models in TensorFlow with Keras and see how it helps you as a developer. To give a head start on writing the models in TensorFlow for the new users, let's start with writing a simple neural network model with one neuron in a single layer. And then we build our way up in increasing the complexity as we move on in this video series. I am now in my Google Colab notebook. You can access the Google Colab using the URL colab.research.google.com. Since the TensorFlow is just released as the beta version as of now, we have to install it in our session. First, let me check the current version of TensorFlow which is available for me. Import TensorFlow as TF and then I'll print out the version, tf.version. Okay, we now have the output. The current version which is running on my notebook is 1.14. Let's uninstall this version and install the TensorFlow 2.0 beta version. As of now, only beta version is available. If you are watching this video after the complete release of TensorFlow, do check in description for further instructions. For now, I am installing the beta version. Pip install TensorFlow is 2.0.0 beta. Okay, this has been installed. Once this is done, we have to restart the runtime to update the TensorFlow for our runtime. Go to Runtime and click on Restart Runtime. Ok, this is done. Now let's check out the version of TensorFlow. As we can see in the output, we now have the version as 2.0 beta. So we now have the system ready. Let's write our first program. Let's say we have input x as some random integers x is equal to np.random.randint minus 50 comma 50 comma 20. This x is related to y in some mathematical equation form. y is equal to 1.8x plus 32. This equation is the one we use to convert the values in Celsius to Fahrenheit. For simplicity, I'll call x as the input data and y as the output data. And this is how the values of x and y will look like. Let's assume that we don't know what is the relationship between x and y. And we want to predict the relationship between x and y using the neural network such that when we input a new unknown input, we should be able to predict the value of y as accurately as possible. So guys, are you clear with the requirement? We are trying to find the relationship between x and y given this x and y data. That's it. As I said already, we will try to find this relationship between x and y with just one neuron. So I'll define my zeroth layer as L0 is equal to tf.keras.layers.dense unit is equal to 1 input underscore shape is equal to 1. So I have mentioned that we are having a dense that is fully connected layer and it has single neuron and it expects the size as 1. Because in our case, input x has only one feature, that is x itself. We now have defined the layer. Now let's create the model. We'll create the model as model is equal to tf.keras.models.sequential. Inside the parenthesis, we'll mention our layer, that is L0. This means I am defining my model as sequential, which has only one layer, that is L0. So our model is complete. Now let's compile our model. Model.compile loss is equal to mean squared error, optimizer is equal to tf.keras.optimizers, Adam of inside the parenthesis learning rate as 0.1. That means I am using the loss function as mean squared error and learning algorithm as Adam with learning rate as 0.1. Ok, we have now created the layers, we have defined the model and we have compiled the layers. The next thing we have to do is performing the fit to our dataset. 
and we do it with the use of fit function. I'll call as history is equal to model dot fit x comma y epox is equal to five hundred verbose is equal to true. Here I am setting the verbose as true so that we can see how the loss values are changing with each epoch. Okay. This completes the training on a data set. Now let's do one thing. Let's visualize as how this loss value changed with each epoch. This loss value is available under the history object. First, I'll import the matplot library and then I'll define the x and y labels and I'll also define the loss values. So, we can now see as how the value of loss changed with each epoch. Once we have found the parameters for our model, the next thing we perform is finding the output for the unknown data. Let's say I want to find the value of y when x is equal to 100. For that, we make use of predict function. Model.predict Inside the parenthesis, we will pass in the input value we want to perform the predict. So, as we can see, we have the output as 209.911 but if we calculate the real value of y it should have been 212 because 1.8 times 100 plus 32 is equal to 212 but compared to the volume of test data which we had this indeed is a good value guys of course you can try improving the accuracy by changing the values of hyperparameters but for me i'll settle for this as of now now Let's see what are the values of parameters our model has determined. We get the parameters of the layer as layer number dot get weights. The system has determined the values of parameters as 1.807 and 29.125. If we compare it with the real values, we can see there is a little deviation from it as the true values were 1.8 and 32. So, with this, we come to the end of this video. In the next video, let's use the TensorFlow to perform the binary classification for a relatively larger dataset. See you then.